I'm Jane Crozen, and I live in Penobscot. Um, and my husband and I have a camp near Wesley on First Chain Lake. Um, I'm a map artist, and I've been coming to Machias Blueberry Festival for probably 25 years or more, peddling my hand-drawn maps of down east Maine areas. Um, and Matt is Matt Whitegiver is a Maine guide. Um, owns Wilderness Lodge near the Machias River, has a camp in Wesley. And both of us are familiar with the Down East landscape and reading maps, and we've been working as a team within the Corridor Coalition um, to determine our best guess of Chinbro's projected route options um, shown on this map as a yellow swath, a, a swath wider than what their actual right of way might be, but reflecting our uncertainty. Um, most of what we've heard recently comes from Chinbro's program manager, Daryl Brown's presentations in Eastport and Callis on January 18th, which I think a few of you were at. But what he and Peter Vigu say and what Chinbro has written down in their 2008 feasibility study are very different. For example, they say their current proposed route will not use state roads and is all private, but in the study, it does use state roads and is called a public-private partnership. To date, Chinbro has not given many specific details or disclosed any maps. Um, these maps, and we're going to show you two of them, one the bigger picture and then one going between the Machias River and, and uh, Eastport, um, including a little more detail. Um, they highlight Eastern Maine's natural resources in relation to the projected route. Um, the, the darker green areas are all conserved lands. Um, the lighter green areas are important bird waiting habitat. Um, deer yards are the, are the tan color. Um, and aquifers are... Um, yeah, they show up as, as, a, as a blue hatched line. Um, and um, a lot of those ha are gravel topped. Um, so um, the corridor may start in Callis at the border crossing built in 2009, southwest of town. In one recent presentation, Chinbro also hinted at building a new border crossing northwest of the 2009 border crossing in Callis, probably right where the Bangor Hydro New Brunswick Power Transmission Line right of way crosses the border. In the 2008 study and in earlier presentations, Chinbro intended to route the corridor along the Stud Mill Road the entire way. To connect to the Stud Mill Road, Chinbro had intended to route through Moosehorn National Wildlife Refuge in Bering, but they found that that section of routes one and nine could never be widened more than 66 feet. Brown said this almost stopped the project. In his January 18th presentations, Brown said they would go east and south of Moosehorn's Bering unit before heading west. Uh, for connectivity to Eastport. In early January, Brown pledged to not go through land conserved by the Down East Lakes Forestry Partnership, including the Sunrise Conservation Easement, which is... Um, he said they are still looking at route options and working on the route. It is still a work in progress. Brown stated the highway would have at least six interchanges, probably a few more. In the area of Pembroke or Charlotte, they may build another interchange. He described a smaller connector road to Eastport with the main corridor running close to Route 214, then west, south of Route 9. Brown said they would be crossing Route 9 to connect with the Stud Mill Road. He said they would likely build another interchange there, making eight interchanges total. Chinbro's mapping engineer, Corey Verrill, stated that the corridor would likely cross Route 9 near Wesley. As you can imagine, Matt and I are thrilled. <laughs> um, en route to the Stud Mill Road, they would pass close to Catance Lake, rated Maine's fifth most pristine lake, crossing protected buffers of the Denise River. 
Throughout this area, there are a number of other conserved parcels, deer yards, and wet and steep areas, along with homes and camps that would be impacted. Brown stated they plan to utilize approximately a 35-mile section of the Stud Mill Road, measuring eastward from the Penobscot River, or a couple of miles east of that, um, puts them right by the Machias River. Brown told the Rural Caucus at the State House recently that they plan to connect to the Stud Mill Road near the Machias River. The Machias is a protected waterway with conservation buffers along the river tributaries and headwater lakes. Since there's already a crossing along the Stud Mill Road right of way, it makes sense that they would plan to build a new bridge there. So combining what we know about the landscape and its natural resources what, with what little Chinbro has disclosed about their plans, the map shows our best guess of the general route they are proposing, shown here um, as a wide yellow swath one mile wide. In closing, it seems clear to us that even the most carefully rooted corridor would cross or impact a number of areas directly and have a much wider impact, not just on undeveloped land important for wildlife habitat and recreation, but also on settled areas with homes, camps, and communities, including tribal lands near Eastport and the Penobscot River. And we thank the Penobscot Nation's GIS specialist for preparing these detailed maps. This is where our best guess started, actually, was looking at, at the Google Earth images. But it basically shows the same, the same route. We know that their goal is to get to study as soon as they can, because they promised not to go through down East Lakes Lane. This route here would be the direct route using the existing right-of-way, where the power line that was recently built runs the corridor, the 2,000 foot corridor, but they've pledged not to go through all this conservation land and they have this hopes to connect with Eastport, so that made them go south and then west. And I know it's going to go slow there. So they get past the Downey's Lakes land, and then cross Route 9 in Wesley area, and maybe probably go up the Sugar Camp Road, or somewhere up through that territory in Township 31 and 37, and get up to the Studmill Road, like Jane said, right around the Chais River, and then they'll head west down the Studmill <coughs> Corridor. So they get to the Penobscot River. Now when they get close, they have Sunk Haze, which is a big conservation land that they've got to go around. You'll see it come up here in a second, right there. And that's the stud mill road. Power lines go down to the south. We think they'll probably go north around Sunk Haze and cross the Penobscot River somewhere in this area. Again, it's all guesswork. And then all the way to Coburn Gore, which we don't have a lot of stuff for. We focused on down east. 